Hello and welcome to the first review of Requests Month 2017. Today we're taking a look at Watch Dogs for PC, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, Xbox 360, Xbox One, and Wii U. What you're seeing here is the PC version, which was sent to me by Starforge. Thank you for that, it is greatly appreciated. This is an open-world third-person shooter developed by Ubisoft Montreal and released as a sort of transitional game. It was supposed to be the first true next-gen experience, so to speak, that Ubisoft was putting out. So they put together their marketing team and they really pushed the graphics on it. And when they were showing off the graphics at E3 and all that, it looked pretty fantastic as far as the visuals go. And then the game actually launched in 2014 and it was kind of a disaster. Most of the reviews were relatively positive, but but there was a lot of controversy over the massive downgrade that the game had, and it looked absolutely awful on the previous gen consoles. Not to mention that the PC version had some pretty serious performance problems, which we'll get into in a moment, but in order to do that, let's go ahead and delve right into this thing and start talking about the presentation. Well, as far as presentation goes, it looks decent enough, but it's certainly not the massive leap forward that they were making it out to be when they were putting forth the marketing materials. The modeling is generally rather well done, they've got some pretty solid texture work, although it's not quite as high res as we hoped, and they do have some very nice shader effects on there, but not quite as good as they showed off at E3. It's really in its element when it's got its weather effects going on, because they have some really, really nice weather effects in this. The rain effects are just spot on, and it really does actually help the game out quite a bit in the long run. The problems start to come in when you combine the fact that this thing doesn't really look all that much better than games that were released on the previous gen of consoles, if they absolutely push the hardware to its limits. I mean, don't get me wrong, it does look better than the previous gen of consoles, but it wasn't the massive leap forward that we were expecting, and when you combine that with the fact that the game really does not run very well at all, you have a recipe for just wondering what the hell happened. Especially since there's a sort of config file edit you can do to basically enable the E3 effects. Now I don't do that because I don't want my performance to absolutely tank on me, but it does bring up the very obvious point that the developers intended to make it better looking than it actually turned out on launch, and they didn't necessarily optimize it when they did the downgrade. On my setup, I'm still not able to maintain 60 FPS at all times. It often fluctuates somewhere between 40 and 65. I have seen it drop down as low as the high 20s, but that's extremely rare. Most of the time it's just somewhere between 40 and 60, which means that it's definitely a playable frame rate, but it's really not ideal for an action game. And keep in mind, that's running the most up-to-date version of the game, which clearly has been patched since launch. On launch, it ran worse. Not to mention it was buggy as hell on launch. Now, there are still bugs and glitches all over the place in the game, but most of them are just graphical glitches that aren't really a big problem, so it's not something that's going to really impact your experience too much. But on launch, the more significant bugs were a lot more prevalent. Luckily, they got those sorted out. What they never really sorted out from the beginning, however, is the sound design. Let's face it, the sound in this game really is not very good at all. None of the weapons sound particularly powerful, they just don't have enough bass to the sound effects, and a lot of them sound outright wimpy even though they're not supposed to be. The explosions also don't really have much oomph to them, so you're dealing with sound effects during combat sequences that really aren't very good at all. But then you get to the other sound effects in the game, the ones that you just run into as you're wandering around the world and interacting with things that aren't combat, and you find that the sound design there is just competent. Nothing special, just competent. The thing is, as I've said before, competence doesn't really deserve praise. Especially when you factor in the music in this game. I have absolutely no idea who approved the soundtrack in this game, but they have absolutely terrible taste in music. The original soundtrack consists mostly of electronic music, and a lot of it is noise-based, meaning that it sounds a lot like dubstep, and it's pretty bad. I mean, hell, the main menu music is so bad that it will actually give you a headache after a while if you keep listening to it, and it also gives you the feeling that maybe there's something wrong with your sound card, because that's how distorted and weird it sounds. And most of the game's original soundtrack is like that tune. It's not quite as terrible most of the time, but it is like that, and it ends up being a complete mess. 
And that's to say nothing of the licensed soundtrack that exists for this game, where I only liked two songs out of the whole damn soundtrack. One of them's by Laserhawk, the other one's by Alice Cooper. There are a handful of recognizable names in the soundtrack, but the vast, vast majority of them are from people we don't even know who they are. And if the music in this game is any indication, there's a very good reason we haven't heard of those. And even the artists that I have heard of, very few of them do I actually like the songs that they picked for this particular game. Or even like the bands to begin with, but that's beside the point. Point is that overall the soundtrack in Watch Dogs is downright awful, and even when I ask other people about that who are into different bands and such than I am, they look at the track list and go, wow, this sucks. So I'm pretty sure it's not just a matter of DW being an old geezer and just being like, get off of my lawn with your hip hops and your dub steps. But when you put all that together, it means that Watch Dogs makes a pretty bad first impression. The problem is that it never really gets past that bad first impression. You play as a guy named Aiden Pierce, and prior to the events of the game, his niece was killed after a job went bad, and now he's out for revenge. He's trying to say it's justice, because he's being a vigilante, but he's definitely doing it for revenge, not for justice. And to achieve his goals, he will do quite a few pretty terrible things throughout the course of the game. One of the more mild of these things is that he regularly empties the bank accounts of just random people on the street, and that includes people like cancer patients and such, which is all kinds of messed up. He also regularly beats people to within an inch of their life, he will straight up murder tons of people throughout the course of the game, and generally speaking, he's just not a good person. He doesn't have any real friends, his family doesn't even like him very much, and when you get down to it, he's completely consumed by his quest for revenge. The problem with that is that it makes him a very, very boring character. Instead of being a character who's kind of haunted by his demons with a bit of a tragic backstory and everything like that, he's just kind of an asshole who does things because he's an asshole. And really the only thing that justifies what he's doing to the antagonists is the fact that the antagonists are considerably worse people than he is. But that's not the biggest issue with the story here. The biggest issue is that they had a really cool premise that they completely squandered. See, they had this premise of CTOS, which is the central operating system that basically runs the entire city in this game. And you see, they keep touching on the fact that the CTOS collects all of the data for the city in one specific place, but they never really do anything with that plot. Instead, they just use it as the reason that you can go in and mess around with the traffic lights and such. They do have a subplot regarding the group DeadSec and their efforts to take down CTOS from within, but it really doesn't go anywhere and you end up going, wait a minute, why wasn't this the main plot of the game to begin with? Instead, they had to make Aiden the primary focus of the game and his efforts to take down the people who killed his niece. They had this other plot that could have been a lot more interesting and they just said, eh, whatever. Aiden's much more interesting. Problem is, he's not more interesting. He's a boring character, the plot ends up being incredibly boring, and there's just a huge missed opportunity here. This ultimately means it falls to the gameplay to bring things up, and that's where the game completely craps out on itself. What you have here is an Ubisoft open world game, and it's styled a lot after the GTA series, which means that it's a really subpar GTA clone. You can, of course, do only the story missions, that's a perfectly viable way to play the game, but what they really want you to do is do the story missions and mess around with all the side content in the game. Which would be fine if the side content were interesting. The problem is that the vast majority of it is busy work. One mission type has you driving a car to a specific location and avoiding getting caught. Another one has you going into a location and taking out the leader of the gang that took over that place. Another one has you eliminating convoys. And then of course there's the activity that unlocks these in the first place, which is finding a CTOS tower climbing up it, and then activating it. I don't think words are sufficient to explain just how much I hate that mechanic at this point. It seems like that's become a standard feature of open world games at this point, and of course it's a standard feature of Ubisoft open world games. And all it is is tedious busy work. Anyway, other side activities include going around and finding these AR games, augmented reality, where you can collect coins by running along a path, or you can do a sort of alien invasion minigame where you shoot the aliens with your virtual gun. Pretty bland, uninteresting stuff when you really get down to it, but the one side activity that could have been interesting is the idea of crimes in progress. 
where you chased down a criminal before they managed to kill someone, which could have been really interesting, except that it ends up just being run at them and then press the takedown button. This increases your reputation within the city as a vigilante, and I haven't really noticed any real benefit from having a higher reputation or a lower reputation, so that seems fairly moot. You can, of course, lose reputation by going on killing sprees or running over people while you're driving down the road or something like that, but at the same time, it's really not a very good way of dealing with a player who decides to play this like GTA. But reputation system aside, there's really not all that much to do in this game if you're playing it from a single player only perspective. When you bring the multiplayer into the fold, things get a bit more interesting, but ultimately that's kind of moot because pretty much nobody plays this thing anymore. It's kind of reminiscent of Dark Souls in that you can hop into other people's game sessions and mess around with them. Like, you can engage a race, you can hop in there and try to tail them, and you can also, of course, just kind of hop into their game and start mowing them down with machine gun fire if you really want to. The thing is that while it may be interesting for the first few times that you do it, it wears thin pretty quickly because there's really not much depth to the multiplayer at all. And a lot of that comes from the simple fact that the game itself doesn't have very much depth of mechanics either. It is a very subpar GTA clone. That means you run around, you drive your car around, you shoot stuff, and that's pretty much it for the most part. They try to spice things up by putting in some light parkour elements, probably trying to make it a bit more like Assassin's Creed but failing miserably in the process, and by throwing in the ability to mess around with the CTOS using the hacking mechanic, which is basically just hold the button down until something happens. The most depth you get is by switching between the various cameras until you finally hit the point where you can press the button to unlock whatever it is that's holding you back. The only time they try to change things up is when you go into certain systems and it has you complete a circuit mini game and once you finish that you've completed it and that's really it there's nothing beyond that congratulations you've managed to complete that particular sequence of events here's a very short cutscene for you it's really all you get out of it to say that whole mechanic is incredibly underwhelming is a massive understatement you mean to tell me that after all of the hype all of the marketing all we get is a really pathetic generic open world Ubisoft game that's styled a lot after GTA, and the only thing that sets it apart is press X to be lead hacksaws. It's just pathetic. Especially when you look at the other mechanics and find that all of those are lacking as well. The driving in particular in this game is pretty awful. The cars just end up feeling floaty and non-responsive, you end up careening all over the place whenever you try to execute turns and such. And whenever you inevitably crash into something, you don't really feel like there was all that much impact to it. The cars just kind of bounce off of each other and it ends up looking ridiculous. The stealth mechanics are extremely rudimentary, and if you have the suppressed pistol, then they're just laughably easy. Allowing you to just pick enemies off left, right, and center, and no one being the wiser, because the AI in this game is really not very good. And it's made even easier by the fact that you can use the environment to just annihilate your opponents without really any effort at all by simply going into the cameras and messing around with the environment using the press X to be lit. Now I do suppose it is worth noting that I did play this on hard mode, and on hard mode you have the damage resistance of tissue paper, so you're gonna be using the stealth mechanic more often than not on that. Maybe on normal it's a lot easier to just run and gun, but typically speaking I had to use the cover mechanics and the stealth mechanics a lot more. Now this is just so you know where I'm coming from when I talk about the actual third person shooting mechanics. It is a very basic third person cover based shooter. You go up to cover, you peek out, you shoot at things, you go back into cover, you reload, etc. There are a variety of weapons available to you, from handguns to shotguns, SMGs, assault rifles, sniper rifles, whatever. And you can customize your loadout by just going to your weapon wheel and selecting whichever weapon you want in a given slot, and then you have that available to you using its own ammo type. So sniper rifles all use the same ammo, shotguns all use the same ammo, etc. And as far as third-person shooters go, the amount of recoil that is present on the automatic weapons is downright ridiculous, sending your dot, not a crosshair, just a straight-up dot, in the middle of the screen going careening all over the place whenever you open up with anything more than single shots. Now the thing is, this wouldn't be so much of a problem if the aiming weren't so bad. I would like to remind you that I was playing this on a PC with keyboard and mouse. There's aim assist, and you can't turn it off. I will repeat that, just in case you weren't paying attention. There is aim assist on keyboard and mouse, 
that cannot be disabled. See, I can understand having aim assist on a gamepad because it is inherently an imprecise control method that makes things a lot more difficult. There is no reason at all to have aim assist on keyboard and mouse. More importantly, there is no reason to have aim assist on keyboard and mouse and it be this damn strong. The snap to targeting is a massive pain in the ass. You will constantly have to readjust your aim because it is doing the exact opposite of what you want it to do. There is also aim assist in regards to following a target. So you're sitting there going, oh hey, the target's moving, I need to adjust my aim. And the game's going, hey, the target's moving, you need to adjust your aim, I'll do it for you. So you end up just moving your crosshair all over the damn place trying to aim at the f***ing targets. Gee, I wonder if it's hard to tell if the aim assist pisses me off. And you know what else pisses me off about this thing? The constant pop-ups in your face with the really loud, obnoxious, blaring a horn that goes, Hey, there's an activity! You should do this! Never mind that it's completely across the other side of the map! No, you should do it now! To which the response is almost always, Wait a minute, you mean stop this activity I'm doing right now so I can go do this other activity instead? No thanks. It's like the game sets out to straight up annoy the player, and it does a pretty good job at that. In fact, that's pretty much the only thing this game does well. The story is crap, the characters are crap, the gunplay is crap, the driving is crap, the minigames are either mediocre or outright crap, the side activities are mostly pretty crap, even the multiplayer manages to only be mediocre at its absolute best. So what are you left with here? A game that, while playable, and it's not the absolute worst game I've ever played or anything like that, is still a piece of crap that you should avoid entirely. I give Watch Dogs a 1.5 out of 5. Thanks for watching.